other properties to expand. Uh, they've always talk, they're always talking to us about the fact that they need more parking, which you know their problem seems like it's a real positive mm -hmm. issue for the, for the hospital. Now, is that something that you would have to tackle as deputy Well, we mayor? tackle because, yes, because, um, you know, we have to deal with the residents that uh, are living around the hospital that uh, usually are not comfortable with any type of expansion of some sort, you mm -hmm. know, because that affects their quality of life. And what about the parking issue? Is there a way to resolve that? You have to build a, to a parking tower mm -hmm. or come up with some type of um, valet service. Okay, so something like that is something that yeah, may be possible that, in the future. Right. And what about the jobs overall? Um, do a lot of the Teaneck residents actually work at Holy Name? There are many, mm -hmm. yes. And, and I mean, you see it because when I walk the halls, I meet people, um, as well as you see people's car tags with the hospital's um, you know, sticker. Yeah. Now, as part of the Ambulance Corps, that keeps you very involved in the community as well, I'm sure. That was, I mean, I joined the Teaneck Volunteer Ambulance Corps when I was 15 years old. Uh, and I, that's where I really got uh, an understanding of uh, the lay of the land of Teaneck. I got to meet the people. You know, the, f the former president of the Teaneck Volunteer Ambulance Corps is also the former mayor of the township of Teaneck, mm -hmm. Paul Ostrow. Um, he, uh, um, he was the one who actually recruited me for this council position. Accidentally. Uh, now, how old were you when you first got involved? I got involved. I, th I, I think it was when I was 20 or 21 yeah. on the council. So you were. I 15. only went in there. I was 15. I was. A, I was a chairman of the youth advisory board. Then I became. <laughs> That's uh, great. Then I became the um, uh, community relations advisory board. You know, it's like it's like when you get started in the school, you just go to help your kids, and then the next thing you know, you're recruited as the class parent to go on the trips. <laughs> exactly. Then you're you're the PTA president. Then you're running for the board of ed, and you didn't know what happened. You know, <laughs> all you wanted to do is come and be with your kid and help their education. Right. And that's what happened here. I wanted to be involved in the community. I was on the ambulance corps. I started being, um, I started being uh, active in some of these other uh, advisory boards. And then uh, one day I went in for just to find out what time a meeting was mm -hmm. for the uh, Municipal Alliance uh, on Substance Abuse yes. uh, Board that we have. And the mayor, Paul Ostro, said to me, Ellie, what are you doing these days? And I told him, I'm working. And so he said, well, why don't you run for council? <laughs> I said, Paul, first of all, I hate politics. <laughs> and second, is I, don't, I don't like most politicians. <laughs> You know, and uh, he said, "Oh, don't worry. It's just four hours a week." You know, that's the old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's more like a full-time job, right? Full-time job. <laughs> Seventeen years later, exactly, a little more than four hours a week. I think yeah. maybe that's what he meant. That see my family for. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you actually grow up in Teaneck? I grew up, born, raised, a little educated, all in Teaneck. Yeah. So you're. So you're all. Uh, so. Um, that, so, what made you get so involved so young in the ambulance corps? Was there something that drew you to that? You know. Um, I, I, I was always active in Teaneck. I mean, I, you know, I, I got involved in like elections, you know, when I was 11, 12, uh, helped the community policing when I was 15. I was, I was always involved in, and I just, uh, seemed like a good place for me to help the community. Mm -hmm. um, was your family involved? No. So it was just something that just you were Just my drawn. friend and I decided to go one day and become probationary members of the Teaneck Volunteer Ambulance Corps. And uh, three months after we became members, the night that we were supposed to ride, uh, unfortunately we had a tragedy where a police officer shot a uh, young man. I remember that. And uh, mm -hmm. that's when uh, things went, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately what you're seeing in Ferguson now is what Teaneck went through back in 1990. Mm -hmm. It was a very challenging time, but we learned from it. And not only did we learn from it, um, we grew stronger and better. We built a community policing in our police department that became the model around the country. People from all over the country used to come in and say, oh, what are you doing with your community policing? And so we were like ahead of the curve there as far as interacting and getting involved with the community, not just the old you know, beat cop that stands on the right, corner and right, knows right. everybody's name, but doing programs. Do you think that community policing is the key across the country then? You know, I think it goes back to my comment of, of people are afraid of the unknown and understanding. You know, the police department do, they, the police officers do have a hard job. And, and, and you don't know that until you become a police officer or try to be in their shoes. Um, I mean, I, I do ride-alongs with the Teaneck police. And I see some of the activity that goes on. I mean, in addition from what I saw in the ambulance corps, you know, the, the stressful situations of pulling over a car where you don't know 
who's inside, what's inside, what are they're thinking about when you're walking up to mm -hmm. the car. So I mean, you got to understand, I guess, understand both sides of the coin. Right. I'm not making any any excuses for anybody. Right. You know, I'm just saying that you just have to understand both sides in order to to get a better understanding of what's going on. But Tina rose to the occasion, and they we tackled, rose to the occasion. We we, the, uh, we built a new police department mm -hmm. based on what happened in January 1990. Not just um, uh, external building, a physical building. We also did an internal new police department. Yeah, well, that's great. Okay, yeah. and we're going to take a little break, and uh, we're going to be right back to talk more with Deputy Mayor of Teaneck, Ellie Katz, so please stay with us. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had, just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. I'm Debbie Duhane here with the Deputy Mayor of Teaneck, Ellie Katz, and we're talking about Teaneck and yeah. such a, a, a great place with so much diversity. Tell us about crime in Teaneck. Um, is there much crime? The answer is we have a, a very good police department, and I, I mentioned earlier what, what we did to get to the point of where we're at with our police department. It's an accredited department. They're leaders in the community policing. They're leaders in the traffic bureau. They're, leader, they're leaders with with um, the different detective bureaus that we're doing. We just appointed a new chief last week, um, you know, Chief Carney, mm -hmm. um, who, who is a real professional. Mm -hmm. And he follows in the footsteps of Chief Wilson, who was even a, a very, um, a very, very good model as far as community policing. He came from the community policing bureau. Um, so we have a great police department. Well, yes, there's crime in Teaneck, like there's crime everywhere. Um, a lot of it comes from out in, you know, we have the highways as, as mentioned earlier, so people, you know, come in and decide that Teaneck may be a right place for some crime. So you just tackle that as it happens? We tackle it, mm -hmm. exactly. What about the recent controversy with the high school students? Um, it was a very they, challenging time for Teaneck. Yeah, they uh, kind of, what happened? They kind, they kind of destroyed the school, they went So in. There's, there's, there's different versions, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure that anyone will ever know what really, really happened or whose version is 100% is accurate. Um, there's, the, there's, there's, but, but what happened I mean, is it was a prank. Mm -hmm. No matter no matter what happened after the prank, mm -hmm. and I understand that that pranks sometimes get carried too far, but they do this every single year. Once again, not making an excuse for them, not justifying their actions, um, but it was a prank. They were these these kids were honor school, you know, like honor school students. Like they weren't the you know they weren't bad students. Right. It wasn't and it wasn't like people from outside of other communities came in and broke in, um, and they crossed the line. And, and they crossed the line, and, and it was late at night, and, and parents actually drove a lot of them to the school. And, and the ones that were caught, you know, there were a lot more that got away. Right, right. Um, some of them, you know, paid financially because they had to get lawyers. Um, some of them, you know, paid uh, mentally mm -hmm. because this is scarring them. I mean, they were taken into custody. 
Um, this is a, a learning experience that I guarantee you no one in, in that was part of this, whether it was the police department, the school, or the students will ever forget, and hopefully we'll learn from that also. And again, another learning experience. Another, so life's all today. about learning experiences. <laughs> um, you have a business in Tina. I do, yes. Tell us about that and how you know you, you know, work with the community. I opened up a restaurant when I was uh, 20 years old, and uh, that got me to uh, see a lot large, um, or got me to meet a lot, a lot of people in the community. And then I started buying real estate um, when you know at that age as well. Now tell me, um, we only have a couple minutes left. Yes. One of the issues in Teaneck is about the idling trains. Yes. What's uh, happening with that before we wrap? So, I mean, you've been reading in the papers about the idle, not, not even the idling trains. Now they're talking about um, the chemicals that are being transported. Uh, the concerns uh, about the, the chemicals. The concerns about the alleged, right? It's um, nothing whatever. proven then nothing. that it's going to be dangerous. Well, I don't know. Nobody wants to say, and, and, and I don't, certainly don't want a lawsuit from CSX. So I'm, I don't know what's in those tanker trucks that have right. the placards on it. Um, but Teaneck, years ago, did never create it at grade crossings. So we don't have one of those arms that come down and, and oh. let, let trains. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a real positive. You know, we've got bridges, and we've got tunnels. Um, the negative is that the CSX has decided to choose Teaneck as their train yard. Mm. So these mile-long trains with three tracks will sit there idling for hours. Mm. And I don't know if there's security watching these trains and they're carrying everything from these chemicals to brand new vehicles and who knows what other merchandise. I've seen waste management, um, tan you know, signs on the side. But it's, it's become basically the place that people know if you want to see a train, if you want to trespass and go on CSX property, Teaneck is, is, has easy access, and that's very scary. Why is it scary? What is the concern? Well, it, it's scary because over the years we've had incidents. Okay. And, and the incidents have been possibly that someone tried to jump onto a train. You know, uh, I mean, we've had people unfortunately hit by a train, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, um, but it's also scary because if someone wants to do harm, then Teaneck is a, is a great place, unfortunately, not just to live, but to come and and choose that as your as your place to do right. harm. So it's and you know that we do get on. there's a lot of there's a lot of people that, that actually monitor trains out there. They're, they're just train buffs. Right. And every so often you you drive by some of these flat surfaced areas that you can just walk right onto the track okay. Okay. and you see people taking pictures. Well, thank you so much for thank being so here. Much for I having appreciate me. it and I we'll love see it. you again I really next appreciate time. It. And best of luck in TNX. Thank Thanks you. for everything. And that's all for this edition of Meet the Leaders. Thank you so much for joining me. Please tune in next time when I speak with another leader from your community. Have a terrific day. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. Could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving because buzz driving is drunk driving.